Hi, this is Emeline from the Off Track family. Hope you're doing fine today. This video is all about finding the best sleeping setup for your four-wheel drive camper when overlanding as a family. So, of course, this video is based on our experience as an overlanding family. We are overlanding with our Land Rover Defender for now more than 10 years and have upgraded it throughout the years. We will share with you different types of sleeping layout that are available for a four-wheel drive camper and of course what we find the best sleeping setup for overlanding as a family. Do stick around until the end as I will quickly walk you through our setup. If you are new to our channel and if it's not done yet, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. First, how many are you? Because the number of persons traveling in the vehicle will be decisive. And also, why is it such a dilemma to find a great four-wheel drive camper setup when overlanding as a family? The answer is simple. You will need to be able to carry more than two persons in the vehicle in a road mode. And you will also need to be able to all sleep in the vehicle or on top of the vehicle to avoid having to set up a ground tent when stopping overnight. Even though it's the easiest solution and that we did start overlanding with a tent, we do think having a ground tent isn't really suitable for overlanding. Sometimes you might not find a good location to pitch your tent or it might be impossible to sleep in a tent next to your vehicle depending on where you are. The best example I have is when we had a breakdown on our way to Sweden and had to stay overnight on the highway before solving our breakdown the next day. Luckily, we had our comfortable sleeping layout inside of the car because in this situation, we clearly couldn't pitch a ground tent to sleep comfortably. Have you also seen all those wonderful vehicle preparations with pop-up roofs or also those very comfortable camper shells? Well, in fact, those kinds of vehicle preparation are very luxurious and in most cases doesn't allow more than two persons in the vehicle because you have to get rid of the back seats, which is a very big problem when overlanding as a family of more than two persons. Unfortunately, those kinds of setups are made for couples without any children or if you want to choose a larger camper shell size to fit in a family, your four wheels drive will become a huge camper van. You could also consider adding the proper proof with also an interior sleeping layout for two persons, but you would lose the usefulness of the proper proof as this second bedding would take all the place of the living room inside of the vehicle. And also this kind of setup wouldn't be very comfortable for a family of four as the space inside would be very limited. So if you are a family of four like us and don't want to use a ground tent for your bivouac, nor have a huge camper van, the solutions are limited. Either you put everybody in rooftop tents, either you put two persons inside of the car and two persons in a rooftop tent, or you could also consider a trailer. I do think that for a family of more than four persons, it's a good idea to consider a trailer because in this case, you would keep the maximum range of your vehicle and you wouldn't need to set up a ground tent next to it when stopping for overnight bivouacs. Do keep in mind how you want to travel with your four wheels drive and your family. The larger the vehicle, the more limited you will be in your exploration possibilities. This is why we prefer to lower our comfort requirements a bit to be able to maintain a true multipurpose vehicle without a trailer. Also keeping it at a 4x4 car size and not of a motorhome or huge camper van. If you are two adults with children, the age of the children will also be decisive. You have to think carefully before making a choice which might not be suitable in the future. When the kids are little, you can just grab a two-person rooftop tent and sleep two adults and two kids in it. But as the kids get older, you need to find another solution. We've done this for a few years and it was fine. 
There are also larger rooftop tents for four persons, but they often exceed the width of the vehicle, which isn't optimal either. And on top of that, children go up and the parents will be happy to have a little more privacy when they are old enough to sleep alone. You can also set up two two-persons rooftop tents on your roof rack, so do it and find this idea great. We didn't really like it because it meant installing two rooftop tents, soft shell rooftop tent and not a hard shell rooftop tent like we have because even with a roof rack of 2 meters 70 long it's impossible to install two hard shell rooftop tent like the James Barrage we have. If you want to own a versatile four-wheel drive camper that still allows you to have good off-road capabilities while keeping its car dimensions, being able to stop wherever you want and being able to remain discreet without having to set up a ground tent and also being able to keep your back seats in road use, you will actually only have this last possibility which is to have a rooftop tent and a convertible interior sleeping layout. When we're out and about with the Defender and stop overnight, we spend most of the time outside of the vehicle and we only go inside to go to bed. This is our conception of bivouac. What's the point of being surrounded by nature if it's to isolate yourself in a cocoon? On the other hand, we did experience some rather disastrous situation where the elements and the weather didn't allow us to stay outside without it becoming very annoying. This is why we first chose to invest in an outdoor living room tent which serves as a living space only in case of very bad weather, strong wind, heavy rain or unbearable insects. We've only put it up twice because this living room is in fact the same as putting up a ground tent. To solve this issue, we recently invested in a fairly large awning. Yes, we never installed an awning on our camper before this one, even though most of the time it's one of the first accessories installed on this type of four-wheel drive. We did test it during a rainy bivouac and don't regret our investment. Of course, this awning on itself won't protect us from wind or unbearable insects, but it's possible to attach an awning room with a floor or some wind breaks on each side. But this is an extra and doesn't really count for the best sleeping setup for a family when overlanding with a four-wheel drive camper, unless you think you really need a closed living room. Now, let's take a look at the sleeping setup we have for many years now. I hope this episode will help you choose the best sleeping setup for overlanding as a family in your four-wheel drive camper. 
Don't forget to add a thumbs up to this video and share it with a friend. If it's not done yet, please take a few seconds to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll talk to you next week. Bye!